Welcome everyone. My name is Sophia Khan and I am a patient advisor in the Digestive Health Strategic Clinical Network. I am pleased to welcome you today to this session on Connect Care from the patient's perspective. But before we get started, just a few words of housekeeping. This session is best viewed in speaker view, not gallery view. Please keep your video camera off to ensure your privacy and to prevent interference with your audio. To access reaction buttons such as thumbs up, click on participants at the bottom of the live stream window. You will then see the reaction icons at the bottom of the participants tab. If you have questions, please post your questions in the Zoom chat box or in the Whova Q&A box or the Whova chat box. We have Kelly Buckroyce from the Alberta Score team here helping to moderate questions. If you experience technical difficulties, please, the best first step is to exit and then rejoin this session. You can also post questions in the chat box in Whova for technical help from our team. This session is being recorded and you can watch the recording later when it gets posted in Whova. So our speakers today are Connie Stahl, Connect Care Patient Advisor with Alberta Health Services, Lana Liren from AHS Patient and Family Advisory Group, Jennifer Reese, Lead Engagement and Patient Experience with Alberta Health Services, Barb Cathal, Senior Program Officer, Clinical Information Systems with AHS, Kim Kisco, Senior Informatics Consultant with Alberta Health Services, and Graham Katz, Manager, Connect Care Clinical Operations with EHS. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, I think that's over to me. Um, thanks very much, it's Barb Cathal. I'm the Senior Program Officer with Connect Care in that EHS and that role is um, uh, I support the operations, the clinical and operations teams in partnership with my other leaders, uh, with the physician, the physician um, leadership piece and the IT. So I'm helping with operations with the, you know, the implementation of Connect Care and working with the Patient Advisory Council uh, directly to support uh, the Connect Care work. Um, just wanted to also introduce or describe uh, Connie and Lona's work. Um, Lona, who is one of our patient advisors, uh, was the co-chair of the Provincial Patient and Family Advisory Group and is now the co-chair of our Portals Working Group and you'll hear more about the portals uh, with this presentation. She was, she's was she been involved with the Connect Care project since the initial um, uh, process to, peer, to procure this software as well as um, all, this, all of the design sessions and, uh, and ever since so for a few years so um, long-standing long uh, great patient advisor with us. And Connie Stuhl was the vice, the vice chair of the, the Connect Care Patient and Family Advisory Council and is now the co-chair of that um, Patient and Family Advisory Council. And as well, she sits on the Connect Care Executive Committee as a voting member. Uh, just to, to give you a bit of a background on their roles. So, um, was there a comment, sorry? Nope, okay. Um, we're, what we're gonna go through today is essentially what is Connect Care? Um, uh, the patient and family advisor involvement. Um, where we're at today, a little bit about the, oh, sorry, next slide, a little bit about the portals. And, um, and then obviously we wanted to save some time for questions wherever, uh, wherever they come from. So uh, that's our overview of where we'll, uh, what we'll walk through today with you. Um, yeah, we're gonna get to Tatiana to your question on the timelines here. Um, next slide. So the goals, um, the Connect Care goals, I think just, you know, simplistically, what are we trying to achieve with the Connect Care uh, project program? Um, so integration of information and patients across the generations, across the geography, which is across Alberta and the healthcare continuum, right? So we're looking to um, be an end-to-end -end, uh, record for Albertans, comprehensive and accessible for every Albertan. Um, we want Albertans, uh, that one of the goals is to have Albertans contribute to access and access their own data and uh, work directly with their care teams um, and also a, a standardization of the clinical knowledge and practice. And so that we're using consistent practices across the province. Uh, next slide, thanks. 
Um, so we'll just go through a little bit of the who, what, when, where, how of Connect Care. Thank you. Next slide. So what is Connect Care? So, um, you know, we're we're trying, you know, obviously in, uh, aspirational, but the information you need and the healthcare you've imagined. And so really we're trying to present a, a fully integrated health record um, that is also um, the, where we're partnering with, with patients and with Albertans um, to, to help plan healthcare and, uh, and, and partner with people on their health journeys. Next slide. And what will it do? So um, aiming for easy access to patient information, and you'll hear about that from our patient advisors. Um, the, through the system, there's ordering functions. So physicians are using the system to order tests and procedures, medications, obviously do their assessments and the clinical documentation piece where you see, you know, typically on, on, um, on paper, you see people writing in charts and, and they would be using the system then to, to document their assessments and their, uh, their um, progress notes, their plans, right, for the, for the patients. Um, the, uh, access to the best clinical, the, the clinical best practice information. And so part of the system, we're building in um, some advisories and some best practice alerts so that when people come across uh, a clinical problem and the system detects, um, for example, patient fall in acute care, um, a, a best practice advisory will pop up and, and help the clinician um, make, make, determine the next, the next steps for that, you know, fall prevention and, and for a fall risk screening, right? So that we're incorporating that best practice information right at the fingertips of the health providers. Um, secure communication with other health providers. Again, uh, people are talking to each other within the record. And so they're, um, the information is all contained and is very secure. And then I think um, one of our other big outputs is, uh, is the quality data that we'll be able to use for continuous improvement and inquiry. And we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, next slide, thanks. <clears throat> Why are we doing this? Yes, uh, to provide more uh, the consistent seamless healthcare to Albertans with better information. So again, um, the consistency across the province and, uh, and really seamless care. So you're not jumping from one system with one type of care you know, if you're in an emergency, you get, you're in a clinical information system and then you go to say um, a clinic visit where they don't have access to that information. So this, the seamless part is that continuous information across the system. Next slide, thanks. Um, and again, uh, patients will have access, patients will be able to access information at their fingertips as well. So again, having information um, available for Albertans where they, where they are living as well is a really important goal for us. Next slide. So some of the benefits, um, more complete picture of a patient's health. You can see how, how uh, robust the system will develop as more and more patients are on there and for longer periods of time. Less fragmentation. I think um, one of the big risks in healthcare is transition in care. And the risk is the information challenges, you know, making sure we're sharing enough information across the transition. And uh, obviously being on the same um, health information system will improve tra transitions for sure. Uh, better communication between care teams. Um, again, tracking of referral processes and outcomes, and that's a, um, tracking referrals is sort of, in some cases has been a real problematic area in healthcare. And this is a system that'll help us uh, ensure we have that closed loop referral management process. And then that decision support, like I said, we talked about um, sort of having that best practice advice at, at the point of care where you're, uh, where you're delivering care. Next slide. So, so the, sort of the value case, and we've tried to present this, um, you know, across a, a, a variety of key stakeholders or, um, uh, uh, you know, groups of, of, um, of Albertans, you could say. So the value for Albertans, uh, information access, we talked about the seamless experience, you know, the common story connecting their care. And so they're not repeating their story, in fact, or building on their story for that particular uh, care, care um, setting and agency. So patients have more choice, right? That they have more choice in, in, and, more, and more voice in their healthcare. Um, the value for clinicians, obviously we're aiming to, for it to be very convenient to use, um, connectedness across, that it's adaptable, um, integrated across the systems and that, you know, we're, uh, a, a strong commitment to continuously improve the system and improve, use this, the data to improve healthcare. Um, the value for HS then, lots of value for HS. Um, the consistency across the province, 
um, is a really big uh, goal for us, integrating um, the information across the services. Um, and again, uh, from the data, we'll be able to have better insight into what is working and, and why it's working, where it's working, right? So just much more uh, specific data around uh, healthcare delivery and the sustain, and it provides us with a much more sustainable infrastructure um, and information structure um, over the long haul. Like it, it's, um, it seems kind of crazy given, uh, you know, uh, implementing IT systems are notoriously quite expensive. However, um, the business case is that it in fact becomes more sustainable to have an integrated system. Uh, the value for uh, for the healthcare system uh, provincially, um, better you know better population health data, the connections across the continuum of care, which we will build as we progress through the through the launches, um, and then you know just an ability to survey uh, the health status of of um, Albertans and you know um, see emerging trends or threats um, and be able to respond a lot sooner, just based on um, better quality data. And so better information, better care, better health, I think is our total value case uh, that, we're, that we're really committed to. Next slide, thanks. Um, so again, who it bridges, you know, the information between the health teams, the patients and the future. We'll start to see how, how that, that plays out as we're, as we're building into the, into the implementations. Next slide. So the scope of this, um, uh, so it's it's a bit, it is the scope of the implementation is broader than just AHS. Um, it's where AHS operates and serves and collaborates. So we have many partner organizations, Care West uh, and Capital Care in Edmonton, Covenant Health, um, some of our lab partners, and other entities are already partnered with AHS, and we um, and we share their record of care. So so in the end, it's it's AHS driven for sure, but um, with with many many key stakeholder partners. Uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, so just touched on that. We'll touch every location and program ac across AHS. Thank you. Next slide. And so you can see, you know, just even from the map and the population, then um, just and this is this is. Uh, you know, the, the um, care, the clinicians and, and people who will be trained on the system, you can see AHS covenant um, physicians across the province, students, you know, this is an estimate from a couple of years ago now, I think we've probably, you know, uh, <laughs> doubled our student count as we, as we find more and more students that are, that are, you know, needing training and we're welcoming into our training programs. Um, you can see the bed count across the different, uh, the uh, different sectors, acute care, continuing care, addictions, mental health, and then the, just the variety of facilities and um, programs that we'll be supporting. Uh, next slide, thanks. And so when is it happening? We're, we've, we've implemented our, yeah, so maybe go to the next slide. Oh yeah, okay, there was, we didn't put the waves in. So we've Im implemented the first two waves, which was um, Edmonton was wave one in November of 2019. And then uh, we just finished implementing or finishing implementing wave two, which is the uh, Edmonton suburban site. So the um, surrounding area of Edmonton. And then we go into a, a very aggressive launch schedule um, over the next, I would say we're done in about two and a half years. We'll be finished uh, all of the nine weeks. Um, yeah, and how are we doing it? By creating an information network that is fast, secure and readily available. And um, I think people often ask us, uh, if the data is being stored in uh, in Alberta, and it is, we, the, 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 our, our data, Alberta's data is being stored in Alberta. It's not uh, it's not across the border. Next slide, thanks. Huh. Is this where we transition? Sorry, I'm asking that question. I should know that. Not quite yet. Um, yeah, we're coming to oh, yeah, Lona. Okay, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Barb. Um, again, it's great to be here today to share a bit of the Connect Care uh, evolution from the patient family advisor perspective. I've personally observed firsthand the engagement of thousands of experts, including patient and family members who I believe are experts in their lived experience and their healthcare journeys. Um, now, while Connect Care is a technical system, it's implemented by, com by a complex adaptive human system, uh, and patient and family advisors have been part of this. Uh, providing their perspectives from early development to today. Um, I want to take a few minutes to highlight some of the inputs on this journey. Next slide, please. 
So I joined the Provincial Patient Family Advisory Group in 2012, and this group of approximately 25 patient family advisors with recent healthcare experiences provide their lived experience on a breadth of work in Alberta Health Services, anything from policies, practice, and programs from all aspects of clinical care to ethics, finance, communications, you named it, we got involved in it. And so one of my earliest consults in this role was an early discussion on cl the clinical information systems asking us how we felt uh, about sharing information uh, in, in healthcare systems across healthcare providers. Uh, of course, for patient family advisors, this was an emphatic event. And yes, I mean, some folks in the room had even resorted to, to printing off their healthcare data and carrying it around in binders because they had complex adaptive systems and they knew that the thousands of systems or that 1300 systems and more weren't talking to each other. So again, we were ecstatic about this. Uh, we were engaged again in the fall of 2014 on a more detailed discussion of what lab results should be shared. Again, a resounding response to share as much as possible, as soon as possible. And I would say particularly from rural residents, uh, rural and remote residents, I had to travel hours to get to a, a meeting with a doctor where they were just simply shared results. In the fall of 2015, we were engaged again in how patients and family members wanted to see their results in a digital world. And this consult, I must say, was particularly moving for me. Uh, Dr. Tim Graham walked us through his own, actually, his own digital health record uh, to show us what was possible for patients and families based on the pilot at his clinic, including proxy uh, uh, opportunities for parents, et cetera. Um, as I popped home at lunch to like my dog out, I realized I was overcome with tears as I was driving. My husband, who'd passed away a couple of years before, had several chronic conditions, including type 2 diabetes. I was thinking of what a quality of life game changer this would have been to, for him to just simply go online wherever he was in Western Canada and check on his cell phone to see what his blood scores were, as opposed to anxiously waiting anywhere from four to six weeks for when his schedule would happen to align with his doctor's schedule to go in and get his numbers. Um, so again, for, for me, it was a no brainer to volunteer in 2016, when the call went out for patient family advisors to participate in the RFP selection for a vendor to implement Connect Care. Uh, despite being the least technical person I know, uh, I knew this was important work and I needed to, to learn and participate. I knew the benefits would be immediate and profound for patients and families from patient safety, patient empowerment, and patient convenience perspectives. Next slide, please. While the lengthy contract process was underway, patient family members continued to be engaged in the background on topics such as My Health Alberta's portal, as well as input into the value and important components of the after visit summary. The after visit summary was particularly important for family members, as this would ensure that consistent information could be communicated uh, to, to extended family and to immediate family and ensure that everybody had the same picture. Um, in 2017, resources were also allocated to ensure patient family advisors could be embedded right from the beginning and supported from the early design stages of Connect Care. The Net Connect Care Patient Family Advisory Group had its first meeting in January 2018 to orient uh, advisors to their, their new role. Next slide, please. Two, 2018 kicked off a very busy year for everyone involved in Connect Care uh, and also for the, the uh, Connect Care Patient Family Advisory Committee and numerous other patient family advisors. Uh, Connect Care moved into the design phase, phase and all were engaged. So 25 patient family advisors were participated in the direction setting centers, sessions. These were events uh, that pulled in, uh, I observed, you know, around 2000 people across the events, uh, staff from across AHA, as well as the 25 patient advisors to provide input into aspects of the EPIC platform that would be relevant to the Alberta context. Now, while 25 advisors doesn't sound like many, I have to say um, my observation and, and experience from talking to the many healthcare providers in this session in terms of their presence and, and voice were powerful reminders of what this significant organizational change was about. Uh, for example, in one of the sessions I was in, there were 300 doctors who weren't terribly happy about some of the implications that this was going to require for them for a change in workflow. And one patient story 
uh, and one and her comments changed the mood in the instant like they she flipped it in the dime and she got a standing ovation again grounding that this important and difficult change process was really critical for patients and families. 28 advisors also provided input into a similar process for the design and build sessions where more specific details of the designs were decided. And this across every discipline uh, in, in AHS and, and detailed discussions about what the impacts were for not just for providers, but for patients as well. Um, the portal committee that we would oversee, what we now know as MyHS Connect, uh, the patient portal was struck and a patient advisor was appointed as co-chair. So I have, the, I have the pleasure to say I have had the opportunity to serve on this role for the past two days, years, uh, first with Dr. Tim Graham and now with Dr. Stephen Turner. We've had four other patient advisors participate, uh, along with the 40 plus HS staff who come in across the province in our, in our Zoom calls. And so I have to say in terms of the, the rollout of phase one, the development and rollout of phase one, again, we participated in, in every design de decision that was made it provided perspectives and again i will say some of it was pretty technical but the stupid question from the patient advisor would often ground it and prove there were no stupid questions the role of the patient was to elevate that role of what are the impacts for patients 32 advisors were also placed on, on area councils uh, while the chair of the connect care patient and family advisory group was appointed to participate on the executive uh, connect care committee uh, next slide, please. And so the work continues today and beyond to involve patient family advisors as much as possible during the connect care implementations in the different waves that Barb mentioned. Um, I want to say healthcare in Alberta, <laughs> we all know this, but I have seen this in new ways firsthand, is an increasing, incredibly complex system. It's really a system of many systems and subsystems. And Connect Care has been a learning journey for all of us in how to meaningfully embed patient and family voice in the design and implementation and now refinement of Connect Care across all these systems. Um, at the launch of each successive wave, patient and family advisors have been and will continue to provide their perspectives to ground health connect care in the fundamental purpose of this work. Better patient safety, patient-centered information experiences, patient empowerment, and enhanced health outcomes. And I'd like to now turn it over to Connie Stuhl to take us through some information on, on governance. Connie? Thank you. Uh, go to the next slide, please. So I'm Connie Stuhl, I'm a co-chair on the Provincial Patient and Family Advisory Committee. A total of 5,350 hours of volunteer time has been recorded among 64 advisors between January 2018 and September 2020. It is recognized that not all advisors have been reporting their total time. So this number is actually higher than stated here and represents the huge commitment by the advisors to Connect Care. Next slide, please. Governance of Connect Care is complex. The portal committee has significant input with both the patient advisor and the provider perspective. The Provincial Connect Care Patient and Family Advisory Committee is a global resource for the Connect Care program where patient advisors have demonstrated fluidity and flexibility for urgent consults outside of their scheduled meetings. The Connect Care project was designed by those on the front line, along with patient and family advisors, where 65% of decisions are made. They have been involved at all levels, from the request for proposal to sitting at the executive committee. One comment from an advisor was, I feel that my input is taken seriously. The highest mutual acknowledgement of value add and the importance of including the patient and family voice has been in the direction setting and adoption and validation sessions, the patient portal working group and the provincial connect care patient and family advisory committee where AHS staff are able to submit consult questions for the advisors that helps guide their work. Advisors have also been included in various committees and area councils. The Connect Care Executive Committee includes the co-chair and vice chair of the Provincial Patient and Family Advisory Committee, where input is encouraged, especially on topics that directly impact patients. Next slide, please. On many area councils, 
Patient and family advisors have a strong rapport with the established core leads, where the influence and impact of the patient and family voice has been noted. Area councils also send consults up, sorry, got a frog here, uh, also send consults up to the patient and family advisor committee for consideration and advice. On other area councils, some core leads due to workloads were unable to connect with the patient and family advisors and build a rapport. One of the concerns has been that many of the decisions needing to be made are very technical and the patient and family advisor input is not seen as value added from the patient and family advisor perspective. Even though they feel their voice may not be part of the decision, the information the advisors learn has been valuable. A simple question from an advisor can ground the thought process and refocus the conversation with the patient perspective in mind. Patient and family advisors are proud to be involved in the Connect Care project and look forward to continuing to partner with the Alberta Health Services in the remaining phases of Connect Care. Next slide, please. This comment is from Mary and George, who attended the design and build, as well as the adoption and validation sessions. Connect Care will help with communication, yet still remain a human process. It will help me to be responsible for my health care, or maybe take down barriers for me to be responsible for my health care. Much work continues for the next waves, and Marion opened the Wave 5 kickoff yesterday. Over to Lona, who will share another advisor story. Next slide. Oh, sorry, stop there. <laughs> so, um, I, I, Marion's quote, um, thanks Connie, Marion's quote reminds me of a story of a, another patient advisor, Lorraine, that I learned about uh, around the, the comment around patient responsibility. Um, and, and sorry, my dog walker's coming back with my dog. Talk about lifetime, <laughs> real, time, real time work here. Uh, Lorraine was a, a patient receiving cancer treatment, treatment and was uh, also diagnosed with a rare immune dis blood disease at the same time. Um, while her cancer treatment was effective and effective treatment of her blood disease brought this into remission, she came to understand the seriousness of this second diagnosis. The mortality rate for, this, for her auto, autoimmune disease is 95%. Um, so Lorraine signed on to the pilot of the early days of trialing the clinical information system. <clears throat> now I've got a frog, so I'm gonna have a, throw, a drink here. Um, she signed on early. <clears throat> and became educated <clears throat> on all her blood score numbers, as <clears throat> this was a key indicator of when the disease was becoming active again. Um, it was particularly important as a warning sign because symptoms were very subtle and easily explained away. For example, the slight bruising that any of us get might might get uh, was something that would uh, could be overlooked, but it was really really um, could be quite serious for someone in her condition. She had successfully returned to work, uh, and she was aware of some fatigue, but, but that was to be re expected. But in her second month of work, when she opened her monthly blood test results, she knew immediately she needed to go to the hospital. Her blood, white blood count was alarmingly low. It wasn't at a threshold yet to, to hit the threshold to trigger the system uh, for an alarm, but she knew the seriousness for her body. Her doctors later told her that she had bought herself two days of critical time. She was immediately admitted to the hospital for one month for one month stay that would move her back into remission. Lorraine says she knows firsthand that Connect Care empowers her to more effectively advocate for herself in the healthcare system. Thanks. That's the story. I think we're over to Kim now to talk about Connect Care portals. Yes, thanks, Lona. So we wanted to just provide a little bit more detail about uh, the portals that we have within Connect Care. Um, there are two of them. One is the Connect Care Provider Portal. It's a web-based application that allows community clinics with an independent record of care to securely access Connect Care legal record of care. Very helpful, again, with patients who are moving within um, primary care um, areas and within AHS. Um, we have also a patient portal that we have branded MyHS Connect. 
So um, Epix, um, uh, their uh, software was called My, My Chart and we have branded to MyHS Connect. Next slide, please. So why, why do we have uh, a portal? And why would we want to implement a portal? As a patient, My Chest Connect lets you see Alberta Health Services health information online, and it can help you take part in your healthcare and, and communicate with your healthcare team. As a healthcare team member, it provides you the opportunity to interact with your patients and together prepare for their upcoming appointments and um, their, uh, it helps communicate between appointments and it helps with uh, collaborating with patients in their inpatient care as well. Next slide, please. So My Chest Connect it's, is a secure online interactive tool provided by Alberta Health Services that gives patients access to their Connect Care health information. Users can access that information from uh, not only a desktop, but uh, through mobile device, which is a very popular um, method. The health information available in MyHS Connect is a reflection of Connect Care record that a patient's healthcare team uses. So the patient is able to see um, what their healthcare team sees. There's no um, deviation from that. And any contributions that a patient makes to their uh, MyHS Connect account is viewable by their healthcare team and uh, vice versa. Next slide, please. I wanted to just touch on um, some of the MyHS Connect features. There are several of them. Um, and I'll just go through a few at a high level. The features that are used most frequently can generally be found in these four groups. So um, starting with connecting and sharing, health and uh, visit summaries are viewable. Um, examples are um, a view of an after visit summary, uh, uh, the after visit summary that Lona uh, spoke about. These summaries are provided to patients on discharge from uh, inpatient setting, outpatients or emergency settings. Uh, patients can view the details of those uh, appointments and they can actually go back into MyHS Connect and review those details over time. And they would be uh, appointments, their medications that they were um, uh, prescribed on, on discharge, the, any notes, any uh, patient education materials that would be available to them that were appropriate. They can also um, have notes shared to them by their providers and such notes such as consult notes or, or um, further discharge summary notes. Uh, patients can request actually a copy of their medical record. So records that they don't see within Connect Care, say past admissions prior to implementation of Connect. They can request the, those documents. Um, we have an advanced care planning screen that has links to helpful information and when it, and a patient can in fact upload documents into their um, into their record as well and those are documents for example such as uh, personal directive this screen is actually this advanced care planning screen is one example where patients were very involved in identifying content for the page and for reviewing the verbiage in fact, um, throughout the patient portal work and the decisions that were made, uh, patient advisors were very much involved in, um, in those decisions about the portal. And they were very much involved in um, the verbiage that was on the screen. They reviewed the materials that we create that were created for as resources on how to use the portal. And uh, they continued to um, review that information and update it every time we need to um, update that materials, just so that it does have that rings true to those people who are actually using the, the portal. Um, the, the other component within uh, con uh, connecting and sharing is the proxy. And that is um, access by a MyChest Connect user uh, to their 
to their, not only their own record, but to potentially the record of a spouse, so another adult, to the record of uh, a, their child, and to another adult who may lack capacity. So for example, if my mother is um, not able to make her healthcare decisions and I have been in fact um, identified as an agent, I will then be, would be able to request access to her chart so that I can help her in, in that healthcare journey. The other group is communication and patients with, um, within that uh, grouping have those, the tools that allow them to send and receive messages from their care providers and they can include attachments with, with them. So a little video or uh, potentially a picture, um, potentially maybe their provider and, and themselves are tracking a, um, a rash or, or a wound that um, they, they have. And, and the pictures are just really quite valuable in, that, in explaining what's going on. They can also send uh, messages to their healthcare team through an act, uh, medical ask the question feature that we have. And then their team will respond back. Within scheduling and appointments, uh, within an after visit summary, patients can reference appointments that have been scheduled for them. Patients can send a request for an appointment. They can ask for a change of appointment or in fact cancel an appointment through that messaging. Uh, appointments can be completed as a video visit. And, uh, and this has been especially valuable during the COVID times where uh, potentially it's just been uh, challenging to attend the clinic themselves. They rather, uh, rather it has worked out that they've been able to have a video visit that patient. And um, can imagine that this is very helpful in other situations where potentially your uh, patient's not able to travel the long distances is able to have a very meaningful um, appointment visit through video visits. Um, patients can complete their e-check-in process. So if you can imagine going to the desk and uh, completing any questionnaires that have been required or answering any questions, updating your, your profile, if you will, when you first arrive, but patients can do an e-check-in and do that prior to even uh, getting to the clinic. And then they just have to go to the clinic and say, I'm here and, um, and wait for the appointment. The appointments are not necessarily only with a, say a physician, but they can also see their appointments and the appointment details for um, if they're going for lab tests or diagnostic imaging procedures or other, um, other kind of procedures. And then the last group that I wanted to highlight are um, in my record. So patients can view their medication lists, their allergies, immunizations that recorded, and they can in fact update the medications and allergies and on visiting their um, provider, prescriber next time they see them, they can uh, together go through that list and um, verify and validate that, that for the information to them to be put into Connect Care. They can view um, current health issues, they can receive preventative care reminder, for example, reminders about um, if you haven't already received your Pneumovax, uh, we encourage you to do so. Um, they can search for medical information uh, via My Health Alberta, and they can receive timely notifications of tests, uh, lab diagnostic imaging, and um, they can in fact graph those over time so that it helps them um, kind of keep track of those lab results. So Lorraine, or right, so, so. So Kim, uh, I was gonna jump in here with another couple yes. of comments from the patient family advisor perspective uh, in terms of, of how this all works. Uh, uh, in wave one, uh, I know of an Edmonton patient that utilized uh, MyHS Connect um, to 
uh, for a procedure she was admitted for, and she found it very convenient uh, to be able to book appointments online. Uh, the video uh, appointment process was, was also video chat was really important. And it was just seemed to be very seamless for her, uh, especially given the, if you live in Edmonton, we've had several um, snowfalls here that have made roads very precarious. So it just underscores again, the important, the convenience for patients to be able to stay home and be able to do all of this online. So really important and, and scheduling, rescheduling appointments. Uh, she needed to change one again, going online and doing it. It was very seamless and, and very effective. So, so that was, that, that's great to hear. Um, I also wanted to underscore that in terms of uh, what you see on your screen, uh, the advanced care planning piece was really, really important to the Provincial Patient Family Advisory Group. Um, long before we got into the design phase, they sent a strong message that this would be an important component uh, for, this, for this platform so that patients could go on and they could input information that would be available uh, for clinicians if they should have an unexpected visit and someone needed to make decisions, their wishes were online and they would be able to have uh, an open conversation with family about what, what, what they had posted on, on their MyChart or, or MyHS Connect. Um, I also wanted to say too, in terms of one of the, um, the design uh, discussions in Calgary that I was part of, we, it was a, a, a conversation on research studies and what we would do in terms of that from the MIHS Connect portal for, for patients to be able to choose or to be able to access research studies. And there was a very heated discussion uh, from some very animated patient advisors who were very clear. They didn't want clinicians deciding for them whether or not they should be able to participate in research studies. They wanted the ability to opt in on their MIT just connect or uh, site that they were wanting to participate in research studies. They wanted to be advised of research studies and it was their decision. And, and um, that was a really key element that was implemented in the design process. So uh, for the researchers in the audience, I, I knew that that, went, that point would be particularly of interest to you. I think it's back to you, Kim. Thanks, Laura. So uh, as you said, indeed, we have implemented that where patients can uh, look on that research page, if you will, they can learn about that studies that might be um, where they might be eligible to participate in, or they can also indicate what studies they would like to participate in. And they can see the active studies and, and that they've been enrolled in. So it reminds them of that as well. Uh, next slide, please. So just wanted to make a comment about where you could find more information. Uh, Alberta Health Services has a, a web page. If you went to, to that web page and went into Connect Care, within Connect Care, there's a patient and family uh, page, and, and that's the link there. And for it has information that's um, helpful from a patient perspective um, about Connect Care. It has um, just frequently asked questions and a little bit more detail about what Connect Care is and what My Chest Connect is. And there is also a uh, how to sign up video on, on uh, that page as well. So I encourage people to take a peek at that. And then just in sum, just pass it on to Connie. Thank you. If you want to go to the next slide, please. Every patient should have access to their own information to empower them to manage their own health care. They should be able to understand the information and have it accessible to allow for meaningful conversations with their health care providers. Thank you to the Connect Care teams, all the patient and family advisors, as well as the SPORE researchers listening today who are elevating patient care in the province of Alberta. Are there any questions for us? Hi, there is a question in the chat box, uh, a couple of them. When was the software program procured? So I think we just referenced that, that we, the RFP process went from, uh, I wanna say 2016 to 2017. So about a year um, through the those sort of the review process. And then um, uh, Epic, we saw, obviously we was signed with Epic as the successful uh, um, uh, proponent and um, that occurred in the fall then of 2018. 
So sorry, you know, the timelines. So, so that was uh, uh, pro a prolonged uh, RFP process and then the contracting. So we signed with Epic in 2018 and started this work then. Um, and then uh, can patients who are in hospital access real-time lab and DI tests through their portal? Um, so Kim, do you want to answer that one? You, you would know the specifics sure. probably. Sure. Um, they, they actually can. We, we, we have um, a feature that's uh, called data glance. Right now, it's, it's, we're going to be uh, in, um, implementing that within the next uh, two, three weeks. Um, it, this allows um, adult patients to, who are in the hospital to be able to look at their schedule for the day. And then, they, and then um, they're able to see their results, their lab results and their um, diagnostic imaging results. I'll, and I'll just, just jump in just here for a second uh, too, in, in terms of one thing that I forgot to say is that uh, during the COVID event that we experienced, uh, Connect Care pivoted very quickly to be able to integrate the COVID patients and provide them, link them into the MyHS Connect system, uh, not just for the wave one participants. So uh, again, just uh, it's, patients are accessing real important results uh, when they need them. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and we actually do have uh, one question over in the Whova app, which I will just read out right now. Uh, let's see, two questions actually. Uh, the first question, uh, how can Connect Care guarantee patient privacy? Cybersecurity is ever changing and it seems that professional hackers can always find a way to be one step ahead of security systems. A family member is presently taking a cybersecurity course, and the prof indicated that the questions uh, is the question is not whether an institution will be hacked, but when will they be hacked. Um, sure, I can try that one a bit. I think um, so. Um, patient privacy, I think, is obviously a huge uh, commitment and and um, priority for HHS. Uh, through Connect Care and through all the patient information systems uh, that we operate, um, the this there is a there is a you know a, a the privacy piece we we adhere to the provincial privacy um, standards and and report through, through the the privacy office uh, the external privacy office of the um, privacy commission right so all of our processes and uh, and that whole. Um, how, how people are accessing information and the why all that through the through a privacy impact assessment um, is work that we do with the, the office of the privacy commission so I think we are confident that we are we are adhering to the best practice and the standards Albertans expect through that privacy commission um, as far as the cybersecurity, <laughs> that is um that is always uh that is always sort of a an ever-present concern I would say of our IT security team they um they have a network, so obviously, you know, we have some internal controls for sure on how people get access and um, and uh, you know a, a very um, you know very active uh, staff education campaign um, to make sure people understand when they might be creating privacy risks or security risks. Uh, as well, um, they have you know threat monitoring, and they work with American organizations and other Canadian organizations on what are current threats. And we would do patches and upgrades all the time to to um, to to keep the security of this system intact. And so um, once in a while, we've had uh, sort of emergency outages for one or two minutes while they apply a patch if it's a security issue. So again, I think a very very active um, uh, security team that is constantly monitoring for threats. Um, you know, with federal agencies and you know international agencies. So yeah, I agree with you. Uh, it's you know, we, we think about when, but I think, um, you know, just based on some of the learnings from some of the other uh, significant breaches across um, uh, the world, right? Healthcare organizations really tried to strengthen the security and learn from, from everyone's uh, uh, misfortune and not, um, and not have it happen to us. So we can't say, you know, it could never happen, but I think, I think we are, they are very mindful and committed like to every single security um, risk that we can mitigate we're trying to we kind of stomp them down uh well before they ever hit um before they hit hit the system 
Great, thanks very much for that response, Barb. Um, and I have one more question in the Whova app, and then we'll go back to the Zoom chat box. Um, the question is, uh, currently there are charges associated with record requests uh, because of the manual work and printing. Uh, do you know if this won't apply to portal requests for records? I can take that. So there are no charges for requests through the portal. So I, th I think the difference is um, patients have access to their health information in, and, and it's, in, it's in their view. So there will be, there might be some times where people might still need to make a request for um, uh, health information access, but I think much more few and far between because people can actually see their health information and so won't have to request it right to be able to see it. Uh, so it's it, the, the request process then becomes, um, much more um, limited or, or you know, uh, very specific cases, I would say. Uh, Kim, is that fair? Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's great. Thanks very much. Uh, now moving back to the questions in the Zoom chat. Um, I think there's one at the end here that we've not yet gotten to. Uh, how would you motivate someone that isn't as tech savvy to want to sign up for my AHS Connect? Can I jump in here? Yeah, um, for it. I'll uh, tell you a story that happened recently to my daughter. So she dropped something very heavy on her foot and was worried she broke a bone. So she went to emergency, had an x-ray and was told by the emergency physician, nope, you're good. Uh, it's just bruised really badly. Go home, put some ice, put it up. Three weeks later, she had a regular scheduled appointment with her family doctor who asked her, well, how's your foot? I see there's an x-ray report on here. And she goes, oh, it's still really, really sore. But because there had been such a span of time, they looked at the x-ray report. Here, she did break a bone in her foot. It had healed crooked. Now she's waiting for an orthopedic surgeon appointment to correct this. So she said, oh, if I would have had, you know, that my chest connect, I could have seen it sooner could have made an appointment with my doctor and had this dealt with right away. So things like that, you can just jump on it instead of waiting and waiting for, for your family doctor appointment. I'll jump in to add uh, to Connie's comment. Uh, as I said in my comments, I'm one of the least technically able people that I know. Um, when I when I watched the Epic demonstration in the vendor selection, I went home and told my friends I was going to have to learn how to order my coffee via Starbucks app because that was the future of healthcare. Um, so I think I also think too. Uh, well, Connect Care or not Connect Care, COVID has brought many frustrations and many heartaches. I think one of the benefits it has done is gotten many people more comfortable with the virtual world because we've had to learn it overnight. Um, and, and to Connie's example, again, for patients to be able to go online and see their results or for following up on family members through proxy, et cetera, it is that extra set of eyes from a patient safety point of view. Uh, from a, a family convenience point of view, if you have an elderly per, uh, family member who's dealing with dementia, et cetera, is getting healthcare treatment and you're a proxy, you have access to the complete information on their status. And, and so um, that is really, really helpful from a family um, support point of view. Um, I know, um, one of the patient advisors that uh, was involved in the design sessions um, had proxy for her brother. And she was so frustrated before the system came into place because she, because uh, she was a sibling, there were certain disputes sometimes as to whether her proxy was valid or not. And now this is gonna be in the system. There will be no questions. Is she is the designate and she will be, the dis she will be involved immediately. So uh, in all of these situations, it's gonna simplify things for patients and families. Uh, clarity of information, shared information, uh, shared information across systems. Like if you have an accident in Southern Alberta, your doctor in Edmonton is going to know about <laughs> what the results were. Um, again, there's just so many benefits for patients. And so just like the doctors that I said were frustrated in the meeting <laughs> and had to, had to realize this was for the benefit of patients, I think patients need to also understand this is for the benefit of patients and to bite the bullet and, and learn. If they can work their cell phone in terms of Facebook and cell phone, they can work my chest, <laughs> my chest connect, um, and it's worth investing the time to learn. That would be my answer. 
Okay, thanks so much for those thoughtful responses. Um, I see a couple more questions in the chat box. Uh, uh, Eleanor says, I may have missed this, but is will the My Health portal via the provincial system be incorporated into the cadet care system? Uh, sorry, was that, did I read that question correctly? Yeah, so I think um, yes. the question is around how does this, how does this link with the Alberta Health portal? And that's the My Alberta, um, My Alberta, My Health Alberta uh, portal. So, for both of those, for both of those uh, portal accesses, Albertans are required to go through the um, MADI process, which is My Alberta, um, you, the, the uh, identifier process. So you register. You, if you go online and look up MADI, then once you're registered for MADI, you'll have access to the the, the Alberta Health portal which um, currently is showing uh, several lab results, like 60 or so of the most common lab results with a plan to expand that, the, the view of, into the NetCare portal. And, uh, and then through, um, through ConnectCare, as, as, as waves, as geographies uh, implement ConnectCare, then they'll also, patients or Albertans will also have access then to the, uh, to the MyHS Connect, right? The ConnectCare patient portal. And I think, Many people want to know what is the difference between the two, or why would we have two? And I think that the, the NetCare portal, or the portal that Alberta Health is supporting, um, has a, a lot of function for those that are not directly tied to AHS, and uh, and some community other information such as vaccines and stuff are in there, um, pharmacy information as well. And I think the AHS Connect then is more will be able to support that interaction with the health system and and with your care teams, right? So so I think different functions for different purposes, but through that MADI process, uh, the My Alberta um, Digital Identif Identif Identifier process, and if you type in MADI, Google MADI, it'll, it'll come up with that process. Um, you'll be able to access both once Connect Care has come to your geography. Maybe if I could uh, just yeah, quickly, jump in. quickly speak as I actually have access to both. Um, yeah. I, I'm one of the stories that Lona talked about this fall or, or this winter uh, running into some health issues. And I would say the major difference between the two is the timeliness of the results as well. Um, I had to undergo uh, bronchoscopies, CAT scans, uh, numerous x-rays, etc. And I was getting the information as my docs were getting it. And the same thing, my appointments and things uh, for the person that was asking the questions about how do you get people to sign up. Once you're signed up, and as Lona said, it takes a little bit of work to do that, to get your Maddie, et cetera. But once you're signed up, you get an email when there's, is when there's uh, appointment reminders or if there's new test results, you get that email saying, hey, you've got a test result that's popped up. Um, my COVID testing as I had to go in and out of for procedures was there immediately for me. So that's what I find the difference. Whereas my health Alberta, there's a lag time. And if you've got a question, you still have to go back and, and find your provider and call your provider. Whereas with the MyHS Connect, I can do a message to my provider. So that's the difference right now. Hi, it's Eleanor. I just, um, I'm very familiar with both the systems. I'm just wondering if there's a plan though to incorporate because um, as a healthcare provider working with patients, specifically in research, I find the more portals you have, the more confusing it gets. And so I'm just wondering if there's a long-term plan of incorporating it. Cause it's, I have to say from a patient perspective, logging into multiple things for different issues is, it's, it's very inconvenient. So if this is gonna be you know, an ultimate system and Epic has the capacity. Is there any long-term, um, I guess, future for incorporating both or is one because it's government and the other is because it's AHS? Um, yeah, so thanks, uh, Eleanor. I think that's a question we've often asked ourselves and uh, what is the value of having two portals? I think currently um, Alberta Health is very committed to maintaining and expanding the, the offerings on the um, My Health Records or my my Alberta, um, um, correct me if I'm wrong. The, the, yeah, health the health net care portal essentially, um, and uh, I think what we're finding with Connect Care is that deep integration and the um, the connect the connectedness patients can have with their teams. Right, it's not uh, more of an interactive portal versus the more um, 
viewing only kind of portal with some information, but it doesn't uh, flow through into the system. So currently with Alberta Health, they are very committed to maintaining their, their portal and expanding the, uh, the offerings through it or the, the, the test results that are accessible, as well as some community um, office uh, summaries and stuff. So I think, you know, for the, sh for the, for the, for the medium term, we're, we're on the same course of having two different portals. And I think, um, uh, over time, you know, I think, you know, de depending on how both of them evolve, we'll see how that uh, works out long term. I think, um, oh, there's Sophie. I think you're trying to get off mute. There you are, yeah. Well, thank you everyone. Um, we have one question, but we're at the end of our time. So we have to get going. So thank you everyone, our speakers and all of you who attended today. Please continue to post your questions and comments for this session in Whova. And the recording of this session will be available to watch in Whova within about 24 hours. We would like your feedback for this session. Please click the rate session button on the session page in Whova to open the feedback form. We invite feedback from those of you attending live today and as well from those of you watching the recording on this session. At two this afternoon, please join us in Whova for a live Q&A session for our highlighted video abstract presentations. And on Friday, please join us in Zoom for our closing plenary panel presentation on sustaining long-term impact in patient-oriented research, how to make your research matter in the long-term. For those of you registered for the Virtual Institute, please find the Zoom link to join the closing plenary session in your email and calendar. And once again, thank you everyone.